Okay, so this is just a quick tips and tricks video for the Behringer Crave. Um, okay, first one before we get started is I wanted to talk about the manual quickly. Uh, get a lot of questions about if it's going to focus. There we go. About the assign output on the Behringer Crave. So mainly today I'm going to be dealing with 13, 14, 15 and 16, or mainly 13 to be fair. Um, but these are the things that can be controlled from your sequencer uh, and converted, or they will run straight out of the assign out. So we'll go through them today. Okay, another thing I wanted to explain as well before we get started is what this VC mix is for. Um, I use it for three things. Um, either an audio mixer for two separate things, so you could have beats going in there in mix one, and you could have bass going into mix two, and here is a, a mixer between the two of them. So if it's all the way on this side, you'd hear beats. If it's all around that side, you'd hear bass. If you mix it in the middle somewhere where you like it, you'll hear a, a mix of the two of them. The other thing that I use this for is a volume knob. If you just had something in mix two, then you could use this as a straight volume knob to turn it up. The third thing this is used for is essentially a voltage amp to boost CV signals. So say for example, if we had the LFO spinning and I wanted to give the LFO a bit, make it spin a bit more faster, this would add five volts to it. It would give the impression that I was doing that, essentially turning it up. So that can be used as a voltage uh, amp as well. It would add five volts onto any CV signal. Okay, so that's that out of the way. Um, okay, so the first trick will be glide. Um, if you turn glide up, glides up to the next note. Now on here, when you do a sequence, you turn glide, it doesn't do anything. And that's because you have to put glide on the individual steps. So when I turn it up, you see the light come on. So what I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to put it on every single step. Make sure it's on the third one as well. I'll put something else there. I don't know, but we'll get to that. All right, next one. Next one. Next one next one and next one so now all the steps have glide on them now they have to be different notes if you go and do 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 then it's not got nothing to glide to so it's got to glide up and down for this to work oh, there you go i put a ratchet on it so there we go so that's back to normal but now you can hear if i turn that off that's normal Now I can add a bit of glide to the whole sequence, like you would on a normal synthesizer. It, you wouldn't really do it per step, per se. Well, I wouldn't, anyway. So that's a really handy one. Okay, so the next one is a mono delay. Um, if you, um, let's see if we play a sound. And we want this to delay we could just connect it straight to the cutter. And as long as the envelope drags on, if you wanted a smoother transition, this can be passed through a mixer so instead of going straight from LFO to VCF you go VC mix to, to cut off and then you'll go from there the LFO into VC mix 2 so now we have an amount of it but this effect kind of works better with the square OK, 
sense to us that one. The next one is on a sequence. Uh, I never seem to know when to put a ratchet on something or when not to. Not from an inspirational point of view. If I'm trying to come up with a sequence that's good, generally ratchet doesn't help me. But one thing I found is quite useful is if we get our sequence and pitch it down. If you hold shift and turn up glide, And then you just sort of play with it. Okay, so I like it on two. So I'll put it on two. If I can remember how to do it. I'm on two. And I think we should go shift and glide. There we go, so now it's got two in it. And I think I wanted seven. I'll put that on seven as well. So that's just an easier way of working out which where you want to put the ratchet. And I find that a bit more inspiring than trying to program it in. That way I can work out what I do want to program in. Okay, so the next one is distortion. If you plug the VCF into again mix two so we can choose our amount of it then we get the vc mix and we plug that into cutoff so now the filter is being plugged into itself via the vc mix so we can choose the amount that that does that and that causes distortion beyond that um if you let's say for example you wanted to take it a little bit further what you could do is you could get the triangle and you could modulate the vc mix this will give the impression of wave shaping if we sustain a note. Make sure it's not doing anything else. Okay, right, that's those ones. For the next one, Ableton. Right, so on Ableton here, you have to move the camera, bear with me a sec. There we go. Right, so on Ableton, I should do. If we draw a MIDI note, We tell that mini note to go to the crave. We'll come in on my second channel, which is an audio channel. Let's go with that for now. What we're gonna do is put a long note in and then another long note and then leave it like that. Right, so earlier I was going on about the manual. If you come out of a sign and you go into cutoff. And you stop Ableton. Right, now if you go into the sub menus here, so you hold shift and hold rest and press eight. Now you've opened up menus. Right, if you go into the second menu, you've got one to eight here. Eight is random, you probably know that. If you press shift and five, we're now on 13. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And that's how we get to 13 by shift. So now we can come out of here. Oh, play Ableton again. Right, the next thing is we're going to here. And we go to MIDI control. 
and we go to modulation one for now. You can see now I'm controlling the cut of the crate. Now the crate doesn't have a re-triggable LFO and when I first bought it, bought it, I should have looked that up before I bought it to be fair. Something I use quite a bit. So let's get back to where we was. I lost track of where I was. Position, length. There we go. So let's give it a re-triggable LFO. And we'll draw it in. So let's get a nice curve going. Right, okay. Now we want it to do that fast modulation stuff. So we'll watch it. Where it goes there, we'll put another one in. And we're going to make Ableton loop this bit. But it's going to start from this one. So you can already hear we're starting to get something. So every time you trigger this clip, you're going to get that. Now if we come to here, draw some more points. Curve this one. Get some really nice envelopes here. And then what we'll do is we'll just loop this bit. Come from here. Now you don't have to have it short like this. You could duplicate that a load. You could then duplicate the notes. You know it's going to re-trigger as well. Then if you go back to your envelopes again, you could take this one off. So it slows down. Now that's really useful. And obviously you can do logarithmic and exponential curves. Curves. You can move these down. Really inspiring way of making a good sequence with the Crave and being able to keep everything in time and nice and tight. Okay, so that's that one done. Right, the next one. Right, okay, we're back there again. The next one. Okay, so the next one is really cool actually. Um, if we start a pattern again, take out the wires. Make sure everything's closed. Yep. Okay, so we want a little sequence, and we're gonna, just going to do a five note run. That's a bit boring. Start that again. So that's not five, but we're going to make it end on five by holding shift, set, end, and five. It's flashing to let us know it's starting again. Okay, so normally you put accents on stuff to highlight stuff, you know, that's a standard thing. But with a five note sequence, because it phases in and out of whatever, let's say drums, for example, it's going to phase in and out because it doesn't loop at the same point. So when it phases over, sometimes you want a bit of what's the word, you want a bit of expression on a couple of the notes. Um, and that will give the whole thing a nicer groove. So I'm just gonna put accents on one, and let's say four for now. Let's just hear how that sounds. It's a massive difference. Mm. 
really good, especially for five note sequences. You know, you could do several odd number sequences, let's say. Okay, so that's that. The next one is an 808 kick. Uh, so yeah, I was told that the original 808 kick was made from resonance, an envelope on resonance, nothing else. So let's do that. Let's track the resonance, not track the resonance, let's send the resonance. Um, let's think about this. Right, okay, what we want is... Let's think about this one. We want an envelope. No, we don't want anything. We just want to do a pitch envelope. So I'll put that on frequency. basic thing and then from there what I would probably do is distort it so we'll send VCF into mix 2 again and we'll send mix 2 back into itself in the cutoff the mod so if we get a note again sorry about that we'll take this back to normal right okay so let's make sure that nothing's modulating anything first Nice, right. Um, so we've got a mod source, and that gives us pulse width on the square. But let's turn it right up. And I'm going to turn the VCA on, so I don't have to do anything. Right. Now let's get that same triangle, run it into a mixer again, and run the mixer into FM. FM and pulse width in tune. I need to key track this. Now, a good thing to do normally is tune this to five. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, I try and do more um, as I think of them. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. Like and subscribe and I'll do more.